You're listening to a message from Gateway Church Geelong. We hope it blesses you. For more information about Gateway, visit gc.org.au. We are a gateway that loves, reaches, includes and restores. Amen. Now, our, the mission of our church is we exist to care for our community and connect every individual and their families to God to see them loved, reached, included and restored. And we, we take this mission from Matthew 28, 19 to 20. For those of you who are familiar with this, it says, Now go in my authority and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to faithfully follow all I have commanded you. And never forget that I am with you every day, even to the completion of this age. And we look at that, that scripture, go in authority, make disciples, love, reach, include, restore. It's the heart of Jesus to grab all nations and bring those people back to him. Amen. All nations, all communities, all individuals, all families, all humanity. That's who he sent Jesus to die for on that cross and rise again in Jesus name. Isn't God a good God? He's a good God. And uh, we look at this passage of Scripture in Matthew 20, 22, 37. And I, I just want to encourage you this. We're bringing us back to the Scriptures to, to refire and restoke our heart. Maybe if you've just been just in the journey of following Jesus, but you, it's like, I'm just not on the cutting edge like I used to be. Let's come back to the Scriptures and let the heart of God reinvigorate us. For what our calling is. Matthew 22, 37 through to 39 says, Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. We have been called to be people that love. In fact, Jesus commanded that we be people who love. Love ourselves, love our neighbors, love the Lord God with all of our heart. And with this being said, I I want us to take us deeper today into our mission as a church. I, I want to make it plain and so clear where you can find yourselves in this mission. Sometimes we we find it really easy to see what other people do really, really well. We find it really easy to see, oh, that person's operating, they're gifting, that is awesome. I can see it all over them. But sometimes we struggle to see ourselves where God has called us to be actually active. This is about how you can be activated to go. Go in authority, as we've been commissioned to do. This is about how you can be activated to go and reach and make disciples, be on mission, to be activated and be activated in the commandments of his love. Amen. This is the outcomes of this morning's message. Apply and adapt the word to your life. Adjust yourself to fit into the word, not the word fit into what we would prefer it to be. Amen. We are a gateway that loves, reaches, includes and restores. Now, what I love about Jesus, Jesus was oh so deliberate in the ways that he trained his disciples. So deliberate. Sometimes that they couldn't make sense of it. They're just like, but Jesus, there's, there's no food. I have some fishes and some loaves that I stole from a little boy. They couldn't make sense of what, what, what was about to happen. But the goal was always his planning. What happened, what came to pass, it was always because of he knew exactly what was going to happen. And he was so deliberate and he used it as a training method to actually get his disciples from where they were to the depth that he needed them to be at. Some of you have started to put together, it's like, oh, you're not just talking about his disciples, are you? You're talking about me as a disciple. Amen. That's exactly where I'm going this morning. He uses things to get us from where we are to the depth that we need to be, where he's called us to actually be on commission from. I want to encourage you as an individual and I want to encourage us as a church that 
what we're doing as a church with our How to Follow Jesus course and our Growth Track course and our Emotionally Healthy course and Bible College and Leadership and Discipleship and small groups and Sunday services and youth and young adults and kids. It's all focused on deliberate discipleship and training. It's about being taught to faithfully follow Jesus in all that he commanded in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Amen. The end goal of these, these things that we do. See, the power isn't in the course. The power is. The power isn't in the program. The power is in Jesus and his ways. That's where we're operating from. The end goal is to see each of us actively pursuing the heart of God and the call of God. We do it with our words. We do it with our actions. We do it with our deeds, wherever we are called to be. You know, if you remember my message from a little while ago, that we're called with one holy calling. See, everything should fit into our holy calling. Work, church, family, relationships, friendships, sports, volunteering, whatever it is that you do, choose to make it God-honoring. Because God wants you in those spaces and places. He calls you and plants you. And it needs to be God-honoring because it makes it very difficult to share the hope of Jesus in that specific place that you've been called to and planted in when perhaps you've been of the frame of mind that this is, this is my space. This is my space where I let my hair down a little bit and perhaps you let yourself go a little bit in those spaces. And I'm talking about our words and our actions and our deeds. The way God has called us to be on Sunday is the same that God has called us to be in our sports space, our volunteer space, our workspace, whatever the space is God has called you and planted you to be a representation of Jesus in every space. Can I encourage you, if you feel the weight and the burden and the pressure of that, it's time to stop doing it in your own strength and be empowered by the Spirit of God that Jesus sent. So God's a good God. He doesn't just leave us to just buckle under the weight of pressure. No, no, he said, Jesus, send the Holy Spirit. Everybody needs the Holy Spirit to be empowered so that they can function in those spaces and be a representation of me on earth. So you may think that you chose to go into that space. You may think that you were chosen or you chose to go into nursing. You may think that you chose to go into barbering or you chose to go into banking. You chose to go into engineering. or You chose to, whatever the space is that you're in, you may think that you chose it. I want to encourage you today. You didn't choose to go into that. You made a decision. You made a decision. But you were chosen to go into those spaces. God chose you. So yes, you were smart. Yes, you applied yourself in year 10, 11, and 12. Yes, you applied yourself at TAFE or in your degree or in your apprenticeship. Whatever it is that you've done, you chose to apply yourself, but you were chosen to go into that space, to be a representation of Jesus to people that need to know the hope and love of Jesus. Choose to be God-honoring. Choose to be Jesus-centered. See, this is who you have been called to be through Jesus. I just want us to look at, we're going to look at Luke, Luke 9 for a moment today, and we're going to look at Jesus and his 12 disciples and some of the things that they, they had to go through to actually get to the place where they were able to, to minister as Jesus' represent, representatives. We, we, we'll start in, in verse, verse 1. This is what it says in chapter 9 of Luke. One day Jesus called together his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority to cast out all demons and heal all diseases. Then he sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God and to, to heal the sick. Take nothing for your journey, he instructed them. Don't take a walking sick, a traveler's bag, 
food, money, or even a change of clothes. Wherever you go, stay in the same house until you leave town. And if a town refuses to welcome you, shake, the, shake its dust from your feet as you leave to show that you have abandoned those people to their fate. Wow. So people don't want to hear it. There's no use hanging around, right? So Jesus will lead you to the next person. So like, that this person's ready. I'm going, to, I'm going to minister to this person. Doesn't mean you won't go back to the town eventually. Doesn't mean you won't go back to the person eventually. But right now, somebody's ready to hear the gospel and good news of Jesus. See, early on, Jesus had 12 disciples who were, who were first called and trained up early. And then as time went on, Jesus needed more people. And so he called another 72 to expand those disciples that were following him. And even at the same time as this was happening, there were people who followed from hill to hill, town to town, pasture to pasture, shore to shore. And then... After Jesus ascended to heaven, there were 120 in the upper room. So all, all the while, these, these strong disciples were gathering, growing, faithfully pursuing the teachings and commands of Jesus. And then on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 were added. Bam! Bam! You see, the mission was clear. Jesus was deliberate in training and sending people to go out into their world to love and reach all people. See, this group now, this group of people now with over 3,000 people, was it's, it's the greater body of the church, just, just like us, just like you. We are, we are part of that body of disciples. You aren't just a church attender. You are part of the body of Christ. You, you are the church. You are a disciple. So I, I thought disciples were like only the people who were like apostles. Oh, no, 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 no. You are. If you've made a decision to follow Jesus, you're a disciple just like the 12, just like the 72, just like the 3,000. You are a disciple of Jesus. Maybe you've been lured into this place where you see yourself as someone who's less than that. It's a deception. It's a deception of the enemy about who you are. You're a child of God. You've been accepted as a child, a son, a daughter of God through Jesus. Don't be deceived by thinking that you are less than the person who's next to you. We are disciples. I'm just going to let that, sit, just let that rest with you for a moment this morning. Life circumstances can tell you different. Situations you go through can tell you different. You make a decision to confess with your mouth and believe your heart that Jesus is Lord and God raised him on the third day. Son, daughter, disciple. There it is. Solid, locked away. That is who you are now. Circumstances can come and tell you different. It's time to start speaking back to the circumstances. Do you know who I am? I'm a son, I'm a daughter, I'm a child of God, I'm a disciple of Jesus, and I'm faithfully following in his ways. Do you know who I am? Stop accusing me in Jesus' name. I know who I am. Do you know who I am? I'm feeling it this morning. <laughs> See, these people, they were faithful, they were taught, they, they learned from the teaching, they, they shared it with their friends and family, they they were on the mission given to them by Jesus. They were sharing about Jesus and testifying to anyone who would listen of his goodness and his compassion and his miracle working ways. This is who we've been called to be. I hadn't quite joined two and two together, but I think that's why we testified before I preached this morning. We we're testifying about God's miracle working ways in our lives. Can I encourage you? It's time to start. If, if you've had that miracle, provision, testifying moment, it's time to start sharing it with people because it's the hope that people need. A God who moves on your behalf? Who is this God? How do I know? About, how do I find out about him? I need to know him. 
I want us to go back to, to Luke, Luke 9 for a moment. And if we can go to verse, verse 3, I, I want to encourage you. For you to faithfully pursue this journey of being a disciple. If you want to go all out and love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, every part and fiber of your being, there are some things that you can't take with you on your journey. Take nothing for your journey, he instructed them. It's funny because we look at this, take nothing, take nothing at all. That seems kind of a bit like irresponsible to take nothing. It's like I'm going for a walk through the Otways and I'm not taking any water. What is wrong with you if you... Take nothing. Here's the thing. They weren't taking nothing. Jesus called together his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority. You want to take something with you? Take power and authority. You can't take a walking stick. Now, if you need to use a walking stick in real life, I'm not not saying don't take the walking stick with you. What, what I am saying is the walking stick represents a crutch. The walking stick represents something else that you're putting your faith in. The walking stick represents something that you were never ever meant to use to hold yourself up on the inside. What you need to hold yourself up on the inside is the power and authority that Jesus has actually given to you so that you can go, amen? God is such a good God. Don't take a traveler's bag. Don't, don't, so I'll just, I used to use these things so that I could actually like get through my week, but I've just, just tucked them there. I, I don't use them anymore. Like I, don't, I don't use those pills anymore to get me through the week. I, I, don't, I don't use those movies or those videos that I used to watch to, to prop me up, to make myself feel good, feel good about myself. I don't use those, those cigarettes anymore. I don't, I don't use those things anymore. I don't use those crutches, but I've just got them just, just in case. They're just on a shoulder bag, just tucked, tucked around there. And if, if I ever get to a place where it's just too stressful, I'll just, just I, won't, I won't necessarily use it. I'll just, I'll just touch it. I'll just, I won't even look at it. I'll just put... Oh, I can, I can get the stresses. I can feel it subsiding because I've, I've just, just took a glimpse. Oh, oh, I shouldn't look at that. Oh, I shouldn't use. Oh, well, maybe that'll just get me through to Sunday now. I'll repent on Sunday. Everything will be fine. You can't take it with you. You've been called to a holy calling, and you can't take those things with you anymore. Don't take food. Don't take things that you've used to sustain you anymore. See, these, these things, what it's representing is all these things are crutches that we can lean on to get ourselves through. And I'm not talking about daily activity. I'm not saying go to Coles, get to the counter, it's like, Jesus gave me power and authority. I'm sorry we don't take power and authority. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about here, spiritually physically, emotionally. We cannot use those things to get to the other side of our holy calling. We can only take the power and authority that Jesus gave us. Amen? Don't take a change of clothes. You've been clothed with Jesus Christ. You've been clothed with Jesus Christ. No other clothes are going to help you get to where you need to go. You go through the wintry season, You go through the summer season, go through spring, go through autumn. Jesus is the attire for all seasons. You don't need four changes of clothes on the holy calling that you've been called on. You need one set of clothes, and it's the power and authority of Jesus Christ himself. Amen? God is a good God. I'm going to read it again, Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Now go in my authority. Do you want to read that word, go? Like reach people in my authority. Don't just 
stay here. It's like I've got my salvation sorted. I'll throw up a prayer every Easter when we put the post-it notes on the wall. No, no, go and reach in the authority that Jesus has given you. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to faithfully follow all I have commanded you. And never forget that I'm with you every day. You know those moments where you can just feel oh so alone? Circumstance, situation, family member, boss, colleague. So you can just feel the world just closing. It's just He is with you every day. You know, really in the moment in those moments, in those situations, really all you need to do is acknowledge that He is with you. I feel everything closing in, but I acknowledge right now your word says, I am with you. Your word says, I'm with you every day. So right now, Jesus, in the midst of this, well, I feel like the world's closing. You are with me, God. Your word goes before me. I'm not going to forget it. See, this, this call that Jesus gave his 12 disciples you are called with this same call. You've been called to follow as a disciple who has power and authority. You are called to go and reach. You are called to faithfully follow Jesus in all of his ways. He is with you every day. I'll say it one more time. He is with you every day. Every day, let those words just begin to ruminate inside you. He is with me every day. In the midst of this trial, he is with me. On the joyous mountaintop, he is with me. Walking back down the mountain, my knees start to hurt. He is with me, amen. And yet, with this truth staring us in the face, the enemy continues to accuse us to try and steal the call, to distract with whatever will distract, to bring doubt and to bring confusion and accuse with guilt and shame, to keep us in our soul realm, to keep us away from the power and authority that's been given in the Spirit. I just want you to be encouraged today that the same power that Jesus exercised is the same power that Jesus gave to his disciples and you have been commissioned as a disciple to go and to reach, reach with the love of God. The same power, the same love has been given to you and I. Yes, doesn't that encourage you? I mean, that, that encourages me. He's like, why are you hammering on about this this morning? We'll get, we'll get to it. Don't you worry about that. Don't you worry about that. So, when the, thought, the thoughts of where do, I, where do I fit in the church come up. If you've ever had those thoughts, it's like, where, where do I fit in the church? You, you, let, 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 let this just really, I'm pretty sure there's a slide for that. Can we, it's, re, it's really important that you, you catch a glimpse of this. Where, where do I fit in the church? Because for so many people, it's like, oh, no, I, I, I attend church. Yeah, no, I, I go to church. Maybe you've even stopped asking yourself, where, where, do, I, where do I fit in the church? I, I, I want to encourage you with this thought. So this is this thought that has been nagging at you. It didn't start in your own mind. The accuser. So where do you fit here? You don't really fit in. Everyone's so different to you. The accuser accuses you. It's like, oh, so where do you fit? Where do you fit in here? It's like ever, everyone's so much better than you are. Because the truth of the matter is, if if we were to have a show of honesty this morning, who has had those accusing words spoken into their ear from time to time? I'm putting my hand up this morning. It's the accuser of the brethren. That's what he does. Try and pull you down, stop you, stop you in your tracks from following as a disciple. 
See, as quickly as, as this thought comes up, we need to jump to the response as quickly as we can. I am called. I am commissioned to go in authority, to make disciples, to love and reach and include and restore. I am redeemed for because God loved me, saved me, called me to this holy calling through Jesus. I'm a child of God. Where do I fit? In the church. Where do I fit? In the church. That's where I fit. It's not a, it's not a question of where do I fit in the church? Where do I fit? Question mark. In the church. That's where I fit. A big full stop in the church. Where do I fit? In the church. Full stop. That's it. Because we're not talking about this room, are we? This is just one of many rooms of the church. We're talking about the church. I fit in the church. I fit in the body of Christ. I fit in the family of God. That's where I fit. It's where I've been called and redeemed to. I've been sanctified and set apart to be in the church. If that doesn't do something for you, I don't, I don't know what will this morning. <laughs> where do I fit? In my holy calling. Where do I fit? Wherever God would have me reach. Where do I fit? The very space that God has called me to love, reach, include and restore. That's where I fit. Fit in Jesus' name. So for those people who have had that accusing word spoken into their ear, where, where do you fit? In the church. In the church. So when we talk about the church, we talk about local church, we talk about global church of Jesus Christ. When we talk about the church, we talk about the local church you've been planted in that God wants you to Minister his heart to the people of the community around you. You know, you've been called and saved to a holy calling. This, this is where and how you are called to fit and belong. It's like I, as soon as, as soon as I sort of felt God just give me all these things, and I was like, what's my holy calling then? What's my holy calling? Well, in Matthew 28, 19 to 20, <laughs> Now go in my authority and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to faithfully follow all I have commanded you. Well, that's good for you, Lee. You're a pastor. You're obligated to do such things. Here's the catch. It doesn't say, now go on my power and authority and make pastors. Jesus is speaking to everyday people. And I count myself as an everyday person. I am a disciple. Now go and make disciples. Now I I understand the challenge that maybe some of you feel. It's like you find yourself maybe being someone who isn't highly outgoing. You may be surprised that I'm not someone who's overly highly outgoing. Naomi would probably disagree with me a little bit. But the truth of the matter is I'm highly outgoing when I'm with people that I've been with for a long time. But I'm not not the person who's going to put myself out there and be like, hey, everybody, look at me. Like I'm I'm just not that person. Maybe you find yourself in that same boat. Maybe you find yourself as someone who doesn't have all of the charisma that you feel that you need to be able to fulfill the commission of Jesus. So it's like you ask this, it's like, what do I have? I tell you what I, I tell you what I've got. I've got a lack of. <laughs> I feel like I don't have. Notice I'm using the word feel. <laughs> I feel like I don't have. Now I, I just wanted to touch base on on this for a moment. It's not something that I, I had planned to talk about for too long, but you know, when we talk about feeling like you're not outgoing and feeling like you don't have the charisma you need and feeling like oh, no, that person's definitely way more gifted than that. See, we each have our own giftings that God wants to reveal to us and it looks completely different to the people around us. And that is good because we're all called to different spaces too. I just want to touch base for a moment on, you know, maybe you're struggling with anxiety. Maybe you're struggling with depressive thoughts. Maybe you're struggling with confidence and self-worth. 
Maybe there's circumstances and situations that you've come under attack with, whether trauma or a range of other things. And I know that talking about these things is, can sometimes be attached to negativity. I, I just want to speak and cut through in this, this space for a moment this morning. We're talking about this because we're not talking about it from a place of negativity. We're talking about the fact that when we place ourselves in God, God can actually help us through these things with the power and authority. And I, Bear with me. Hold on for a moment. It's like, I've tried it before. I'm not talking about a lightning bolt experience moment. I'm talking about the power and authority outworking in our lives on a daily basis to bring us up to the place over time where God would have us outwork from. And there's some things that need to happen along that journey. You need to talk to someone. First and foremost, do not try and run this race alone under the weight of anything that would hold you down. Can I encourage you? She's like, oh, I, I don't want to go see a professional. Fantastic. Can I encourage you? Head out into the foyer after the service. Jump on your own phone after the service. Go to community.gc.org.au and book a pastoral appointment with myself or Pastor Naomi and start your journey at a pastoral level. If that's where you have to start, start there. We'll worry about those other things as time goes on. Let God begin to move today and then gradually walk out the journey. It may lead to seeing someone professionally, whatever you need. If you feel weird about that, I just want to encourage you that I have seen people professionally. It's not because my world's falling apart. It's because I don't want it to fall apart. Power of God. Wisdom of godly people, put them together, sets us up for power, amen? So if, you're, if you find yourself you know, worrying and being nervous and fearful, you know, unable to think clearly, have trouble focusing, maybe you find yourself in different moments and you're so accustomed with it, you find yourself just sitting on the couch or laying down and all of a sudden you just randomly start sweating or trembling or this knot starts to build up inside of you. Breathing changes, feel sick. I want to encourage you. Whatever triggers those things, whether it be stress, work, relationships, finances, the loss of a loved one, major, major life events gone on, maybe it's trauma, maybe it's abuse, maybe it's illness, whatever it is, it's time to stop. It's time to put yourself in a place and understand that God has given you power. God has given you authority. You know, but I still like I, I feel like these things are on top of me. You know, it may feel like that, but it's time to start outworking the journey toward health. We are a gateway to health. We are a gateway to restoration. We truly believe that God can outwork in your life and your heart. And it may take a, a couple of healthy people around you to actually help direct you and guide you. This is the faithful teaching that we're committed to out of Matthew 28, 18 and 19, 19 and 20. Amen. I say all of those things because sometimes we can, it's like, what do I have? What have I got? I tell you what I've got a lack of. I've got a lack of this and this and this and this and this and this. Have I mentioned enough yet? Because I could keep going. I, I want to encourage you. It's not about what you don't have. It's about what you do have. It's time to just to shift, shift the attention. You're looking at all those things that you don't have, but you've, you've maybe you've never looked at or forgotten to keep looking at what you do have. What do you have? Authority in Jesus. That's what you do have. Power and authority in Jesus. Power and authority to go and reach. And his, his authority can be as simple as, so you may be like, oh, I... No charisma. It's like, I don't want to be in front of people. How about we just simplify it for a moment? Just as I'm coming to them as the keys come this morning. How about we simplify it for a moment? Going and reaching with his authority and his power can be as simple as this. Encouraging a friend. <laughs> so your friend doesn't know Jesus. Encourage them with the hope, the good news of Jesus. A family member, work colleague. Anyone in your space, just encourage them. Encourage them that you have found what you were looking for. You found hope and peace and joy through Jesus. Then 
then by simply encouraging them to come to church with you, you're exercising the going and reaching in his authority. Oh, I could do that. I could do that. Go and bring them. I want to encourage you. It's like, you, maybe you're like, oh, I'm not ready to baptize someone in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Like, I'm, not, I'm not ready to do those things. Go and encourage them. Go and invite them. Share your good news story. And we'll take care of the rest until you get to the place where you can do it yourself. Amen. We'll take care of the rest. Go and bring them. We'll help you support them. We'll help you make disciples. We'll help you baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We'll help teach them to faithfully follow all that Jesus commanded. You are called to go and reach your friends, your family, and the people of every nation. You know, it's my desire to see even more nationalities as a part of, part of Gateway. You know, we've got people of either from or people with heritage from India, Malaysia, South Africa, Kenya, M- Namibia, Italy, Greece, New Zealand, Maori brothers and sisters, Canadians, Dutch. I thought you'd cheer for yourself, Dutch people. <laughs> It's ready for the. Hey! We'll work on that later. Filipino, Lebanese, Fijian, Spanish, First Nation, Indigenous Australians, Torres Strait Islanders. I want to encourage you this week from today to next Sunday is NADOC week. Let's celebrate our Indigenous brothers and sisters. Amen. Old Australians, New Australians, British, dual passport British Australians Middle Eastern nationalities have I missed any? if, if, if your people haven't been mentioned let, let, let me know this morning Ugandan who else? Oh, I mentioned Australians Laos said Lebanese Spanish Spanish anyone else? Macedonian, come on. Because Macedonia is not it's not Greece. <laughs> you can tell that I went to a multicultural school. Amen. Whew, some dust ups on the oval. Um see, I know that it's God's heart to reach all nations, tribes and tongues. It's our heart too. Every nation, all people. We are a gateway that loves, reaches, includes, and restores all people. Where do you fit in the church? You've been given authority and power to go and reach. You are a gateway that is called to and has been given authority to love, reach, include, and restore. Just as the band comes this morning, you know, today I, I just want you to take this teaching. Take the teaching as the disciple that you are. Not as the attender that you thought you were, as the disciple that you are. Faithfully follow the call and the teaching of Jesus. Go and love your people. Go and reach your people. Go and include your people. Go and restore your people in Jesus' name. You were born for this. You were saved for this. You were called for this with a holy calling. Amen. This morning, just as I finished last week, what's God doing in me? What am I doing to further His work in me? What's God doing in me? What am I doing to further His work in me? I strongly, strongly believe there there are people represented right here, right now this morning. And you have giftings on your life, specific giftings. If you're wondering whether it's about to get prophetic at the moment, it, this is what's happening right now. There are people represented right now, sitting here this morning, watching this morning. You have the gifting to evangelize. Not just the ability to be a disciple that goes, but the gifting to evangelize. This is not for everybody. Some people are like, thank God. I thought you, thought you were trying to include me in that. So I love the message, but you lost me. 
there are people right here, right now. And you're like, I, I don't necessarily feel that, feel that God's called me to operate here in a space like this for that to outwork. I would agree with you. Because your gifting of evangelism is for out there. Whether it's your workplace, the community group that you're part of, you may feel called to go into a specific place. You may call, feel called to go into hospitals. You may feel, feel called to go into prisons. You may feel called to be a chaplain that's on the ground encouraging people with the hope of Jesus. Hang on a second, those things can be evangelism? Well, yes, people. Yes, yes, that's where God's called you to actually outwork that gift of evangelism. If that's you this morning, I just want you to stand to your feet. Is there anyone else this morning? Are you, maybe that started to light a fire inside of you. Like, oh, I didn't know that was there. If that's you, stand to your feet. You, 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 you activated this morning. You, you, you've been chosen, but you're going to make a choice to stand, to step in. Amen. Holy Spirit, God, I pray for these people who are standing right now and those who are on the, on the verge and edge of standing. At the end of the day, it's not important whether you stand or sit this morning. It's, it's important that you step into the space, step into the gifting that God has called upon your life. Holy Spirit, that the power and authority of God be released into their gift like they've never known before, Father God. Whether it's in the workspace, Holy Spirit, God, I pray, let the influence, let the influence let it be made known, praise God. Let it be known, Father God. Yes, praise God. Let it be known, Father God, as they step out in faith, one-on-one, -on -one, group of 10, group of 15, group of 20, whatever it looks like that the Holy Spirit is there with you in that moment. He is with you every day in the gifting that you've been called to outwork in. Holy Spirit, God, I pray for a supernatural impartation right now, Father God. Release the gift right now in Jesus' Name. Holy Spirit, let the fire begin to burn like it's never burnt before. Reignite the coals, Father God, in Jesus' powerful Name. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. You know, this morning, I, it's not something I'd normally do, but I, I truly believe that Jesus has mandated His church to go and reach. And this morning, I, I simply ask for this. If it's in your heart to reach our families and our community for Jesus, would you stand with me this morning? Awesome. So we're not talking about ministry roles here. We're just talking about the heart of God, the Word of God being revealed in your heart this morning and you choosing to actually go, yeah, I don't know what it looks like, but it's beginning to burn in my heart. It's beginning to speak to me. I, I, want, I, want, to, I want to go and reach. I want to be part of a church that includes and restores people into relationship with God as I love them, as Jesus has loved me. Just lift your hands to Jesus. Just as our eyes are closed this morning, you, maybe you've, been, you've heard me this morning speaking of Jesus and His hope and that Jesus went to the cross to die for the forgiveness of your sins. Buried, rose again on the third day. You're like, this, this sounds awesome. This sounds like the hope that I've been looking for. Maybe you're watching online this morning, you're watching at a later time. I want to encourage you that Jesus loves you. God loves you, sent His Son to die on a cross for you. Buried and rose again for the forgiveness of your sins to restore you back into relationship with Him. And just as you're in this place this morning, and you're like, I, I want that. I, I want what you're talking about. I want that hope. I want that salvation. I want to know God personally. It says in Romans 10 verse 9, that if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. And so this morning, just with every eye closed, if you're watching online, this is for you too. I, I want to give you the opportunity to say, yeah, I want that salvation. I want to pray a prayer, declaring, believing in my heart, confessing with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. 
If that's you, I'm going to invite you to, in a moment to put your hand up. Once you put it up, you can put it back down. But I don't want you to miss this moment of salvation. If that's you, on the count of three, why don't you lift your hand and then you can put it down. One, two, three. Who wants salvation in Jesus? Yes, awesome. Thank you. Anyone else today? Say, yeah, I, I want the hope of Jesus. Is it anyone else this morning in the room? Say, yeah, I, I need Jesus. I need His hope. I need forgiveness. I need His salvation. If you're watching online this morning, you put your hand up and you put it back down. Awesome. Thank you. you can, yeah, I see the hands. Is there anyone else this morning? Say, yeah, I, I need I need salvation. I need to be fully restored. I need my spirit to be made new, completely new. I want to be a new creation in Jesus. That's what the Word says. You accept Jesus, you are made new. The old is gone. New life begins in Jesus' name. You know, maybe you haven't put your hand up, but in your heart, you're like, I I need, I need salvation. Whether your hand's gone up or whether it hasn't this one, it's okay. What you need to do this one is confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And so as a church together, we're going to pray a prayer. Whole church is going to pray it with you if you're responding to Jesus for the first time or recommitting your life. If you're watching online, say this prayer with us this morning. We want, to, we want you to know Jesus and His hope and restoration personally. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you went to the cross, you were buried and rose again on the third day for the forgiveness of my sins. God, I thank you that you sent Jesus. From this day on, I choose to follow Jesus. I surrender my life. I repent of my sin. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised Him from the dead. And therefore, I am saved in Jesus' Name. Amen. Why don't we put our hands together this morning? Awesome. Awesome. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, I want to encourage you after the service, if you're in the room, feel free to come down the front and have a chat to me. I'd love to talk to you and encourage you. If you don't feel comfortable to do that this morning, that's okay. On the way out, one of our team will be there with a a pamphlet that's going to help you understand what you've done. It talks about the first steps of following Jesus. And you'll be able to fill fill out a card, fill it out online, in person, whatever works better for you. And one of our pastors will make contact with you to encourage you in your next steps in following Jesus. If you're watching online this morning, you can go to GC au forward slash first steps all that same information is there please connect with us we want to see you take the next steps in following Jesus Amen